Welcome to Taking Care of Business on News Talk 1180-KERN for the best in Saturday talk radio at 1 o'clock and on 1230-KGEO at 10 o'clock on Saturday and for the very best in Wednesday talk radio on 1410-KERI, the Christian station. We're now on 1000 KKIM in Albuquerque, New Mexico and also three times a week, count them, three times on the internet. On one, two, three. One, two, hey, very good. Tomorrow, Clay, we go to geography. <laughs> <laughs> on the internet at knookmedia.com, serving Richmond, Oakland, and the San Francisco Bay Area. Plus, you can catch any of our shows for the last four years on the internet at Clay and Marty Show. Your host is Clay Kerner, and I'm Marty Pay, and our incredible producer is Greg Held. Hey, Clay, that was a great show last week with uh, Pedro Rios, who's running for the Assembly again, and my old buddy Rob West, who wrote a great book called The Thin Wall. Going to be interesting to see how Pedro does. Yeah, and we're going to have... Uh, I wonder which Republican's going to be in the runoff with Rudy. Well, and actually, we're going to have to call Rudy Salas and have him come on in the next couple Love of weeks. Love to. I want to have Rudy come on. Yeah, that would be great. But this week, we've got a really, really special show lined up. The second half, we have a gentleman who's running for Secretary of State here in... Uh, in California, so we'll be talking to him. But right now on the phone, we've got a gentleman who wrote a very, very special book, I, I guess about 15 years ago. I didn't realize it was that long ago. Larry Julian wrote a great book called God is My CEO. Larry, welcome to Taking Care of Business. Hey, it's great to be on your program. It's good to have you, Larry. When did you Thank write this? You. When did you write the first edition? You know, I wrote the first edition now, it'll be 14 years ago. And, um, yeah, and times were quite different back then. But, uh, you know, I basically wrote that book because I work with business leaders and CEOs, and I saw how you could pray to God on Sunday. But Monday through Friday, you walked into a very different business culture with a very different set of values. So it's been a nice journey between now and uh, coming out of the second edition. So you covered Monday through Friday and Sunday. What about Saturday? <laughs> <laughs> well, Saturday still counts as well, so you can, um, you know, it's that it's that between from Sunday and then the Monday through Saturday. You're you're. I think that some people work in the seven days a week. Quite frankly, yeah, I know the feeling. So, yes, we do. <laughs> you know, and looking looking through your book, uh, it looks like it'd be a great um, book for a Bible study group or a church group to get into, especially if they have a lot of uh, business leaders. Yeah, well, that's exactly what the book was designed for. You know, I designed the book as a, um, you know, it's laid out very succinctly where it's, here's a business issue, here's God's solution. I tell two stories or case st uh, studies of leaders on how they integrated the work and faith. And then there's a discussion guide at the end of each chapter and an action plan. So basically the book is designed as a 12-week uh, Bible study, and uh, a lot of people do use it. So um, that's exactly how it's designed. You know, right now, especially with, uh, you, you hear a lot of companies that are, that are Christian companies, Hobby Lobby, Chick-fil-A, that have been in the news quite a bit lately. I, is that something that you deal with in the book, or is that, is that are, are you looking more at leadership and business skills as opposed to, you know, getting involved beyond that? You know, I think it's a little bit of both. Uh, you know, 14 years ago, I had the privilege of uh, interviewing uh, Truett Cathy for Chick-fil-A. And, uh, you know, what's interesting is the, you know, he's now in the news for other reasons other than the purpose of when I wrote about him. And, and basically, what I liked about Truett Cathy's story as a business leader, is here's a guy who's just this country guy that uh, opened up one restaurant in Georgia in 1947, and it's turned into this huge conglomerate of um, fast food and, and chicken sandwiches. But I, I wrote about him because I like the way that he's, he remained true to his convictions. And very simply, he didn't want to be open or have his stores open on Sunday because he felt that, that we need a day of rest, and that's the Lord's Day. And, you know, he wasn't making a statement. He just felt that, I remember way back when, him and his brother needed to get rest and restoration for one day. And so that was a, um, an important element to him. 
So I, I wrote about that. But as it relates to the other leaders in the book, you really, they were interviewed for a range of issues that are relating to just how do I live my faith in a very bottom line world in which there are many facets and complexity to that. So it's, there's a wide range of issues. We're having a conversation with Larry Julian, author of God is My CEO. So, Larry, what is your background that created the uh, desire to write this kind of book? Well, that's an interesting story. <laughs> My background, for me, I, I grew up, um, you know, I think the, the Lord works in strange ways. I, I work as a stereotypical, I was a Jewish kid from Brooklyn, New York. And quite frankly, the bottom line was my God. I really didn't have any much of a faith growing up. And I knew growing up, I just wanted to be successful. So I, when I graduated college, I entered into the hotel restaurant field in the hotel business. And it was just a, a crazy world. And I worked my way up the ladder all the way to a director of sales and marketing only to get fired much into that career. And that's where I had, quote, a conversion experience, if you would, where God became my CEO. And so, you know, my background was interesting. It all came from business, and uh, that was my definition of success. But when God became my CEO, I was able to have a redefinition of success. And it really led to you know, eventually, you know, writing a book about how do you bring in your faith and your work? Because I learned early on, you know, where I, as, as a kid in, in New York, uh, dealing with anti-Semitism, and I didn't want to share my faith. And in the business world, it it was similar. It's like you never share your soft underbelly. You don't ever want to share your vulnerability, so you keep things to yourself. And I saw that um, that's the way business leaders dealt with business world. Even though they were struggling and how do I integrate my work and faith, they didn't know how to do it. And that was the basis of me writing the book. You know, one thing, Larry, I was curious about, you know, following God's principles in a, in a bottom line world. You know, so, so many times when you're in, in business, you're dealing in gray areas. And, yeah. you know, when you're looking at your faith, there is no gray area. It's either, you know, it's, it's pretty much black or white. How, how, do you, how do you help people struggle through those gray areas as a business leader? Yeah, that, that's a great question because, you know, you, you hit the nail on the head. In business and in life, there are, there are certain elements of uncertainty. And, you know, but we are called to live a certain way. And I think that one thing that I would tell your viewers and business and the readers, it, you know, it, it'll be a fact if you're in business and in life that you're going to live in a volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous world. And if anything, that increases day by day. So a lot of business leaders, including my face, including myself, are faced with a lot of gray uncertainty as it relates to the future. What I would advise business leaders alike is you need to really look toward, towards what is your, you know, in terms of who your God is and what does that God represent in terms of what you're called to be and do. So in my particular case, I, you know, for me, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ, and there's a set of principles that are laid out on how I'm supposed to you know, act in terms of loving others and being honest and, and doing the right thing, discerning, you know, right from wrong. These are aspects that, you know, the Lord has given me the freedom to choose. And so I think we need to look at, you know, what is our path in the midst of uncertainty that's ever-changing when we have a certain principles and a core that's, that's never-changing. And so it's a challenge, but it's at least a, a bit of a guidance in the uncertainty of life. When, when we come back from the break, Larry, I'd like to talk a little bit about something you said about replenishing energy to deal with activity overload. I think that's something a lot of us can you know, deal with. I mean, Larry, I mean, uh, Clay and I both have our own individual businesses on top of this. I teach a little bit on the side. And, you know, the energy overload, you know, when you're in business, you, you tend to be a type A personality that gets involved in too much, so you end up with too much on your plate. So when we come back from the break, let's talk a little bit about energy overload. <laughs> we'll be back yeah. in a moment on Taking Care of Business on Current Radio News Talk 1180.